Can Linux save this old 2014 MacBook Pro? Well, yes, in a lot of ways it can. You see, a couple years ago, Apple stopped providing security updates for this model, which means it's not safe to use the internet, and overall it became somewhat of a paperweight. But thanks to Linux, I'm now able to run the latest cutting-edge software. And in fact, it's performing better now than ever before. The hardware is still surprisingly usable today, with 16GB of RAM, a 4th gen Intel i7 CPU with Iris Pro graphics, and a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M. And thanks to Steam and Proton, this MacBook is able to play AAA games back from its era. For example, here's Batman Arkham City running perfectly at 720p high settings, and here's GTA 5 also running at 720p and maintaining a stable 60fps. However, Linux cannot save this MacBook from the laws of physics. You see, at this point in time, Apple was already in the mindset that thinner is better. So it turns out this laptop is extremely lacking when it comes to cooling. So even though GTA 5 was running smooth at first, if we look at the end of the benchmark, we see the GPU has severe thermal throttling and went from its original clock speed of 925 MHz down to 660 and occasionally dipping all the way down to 270 MHz, which is really bad and makes it practically unusable. I'm not sure what Apple was thinking here. Not only is cooling completely inadequate, but the Nvidia GPU isn't even that much faster than the CPU's built-in Iris Pro graphics, which were revolutionary at the time for an integrated GPU. In fact, when it comes to gaming performance, the GT 750M is only about 30% faster. Fortunately, there is a way to disable the NVIDIA GPU and run everything from the integrated graphics instead, which gives a nice boost in battery life and lower temps. However, it still overheats during games because the CPU itself is now using more power than it did before. If they simply left out the NVIDIA card and designed the cooler around just the CPU, then I think this laptop would have made a lot more sense. But anyway, if you're curious how to get older GPUs working with Proton, I've provided some helpful tips in the description. Thanks for watching this short clip which answered the question, 